Over the past decade, China's growing influence on the African continent has been a subject of both praise and skepticism. While some view it as an opportunity for economic development, others question the potential implications and the concept of a new form of colonialism. Welcome back to the New Tourist Channel. In today's video, we will dig into a thought-provoking topic that has sparked much debate and concern, which is China's debt trap diplomacy in Africa. Before we dive deeper into the details, let's first understand what debt trap diplomacy entails. In simple terms, it refers to a situation where a creditor country, in this case, China, extends loans to a debtor country, often in Africa, with terms that are financially burdensome. These loans are primarily allocated towards infrastructure projects, such as roads, railways, and ports, aimed at boosting economic growth and development in the region. On the surface, this may sound like a positive arrangement, as it brings much-needed investment and creates job opportunities. However, concerns arise when the debtor country struggles to repay these loans, leading to a potential loss of sovereignty and control over key assets. Many African countries have found themselves caught in a debt trap, where they are unable to generate sufficient revenue to service the loans. As a result, they often face difficult choices, including forfeiting critical infrastructure projects or granting significant control to the creditor country. Questions are raised about the lack of transparency surrounding loan agreements and the potential long-term consequences for the continent. In this video, we will examine some countries where China's debt trap diplomacy is being felt, how the EU and USA are responding, consequences, and explore possible strategies for African countries to mitigate risks and maximize benefits. Without wasting much of your time, let's begin. China's diplomacy and debt trap strategy have been felt across several African countries, and they have reacted in so many ways. Some of these countries include 1. Kenya Kenya has been one of the major recipients of Chinese investment in Africa. Chinese companies have been involved in various infrastructure projects, including the Standard Gauge Railway, the Lamu Port, and the Nairobi-Mombasa Highway. However, the country has also experienced challenges with debt repayment, leading to concerns about potential loss of control over key assets. Kenya, in response to the potential debt trap by China, has taken various measures to navigate this challenge. The Kenyan government has sought to diversify its sources of funding by actively seeking partnerships with other international financial institutions and exploring avenues for private sector investments. This approach aims to reduce dependence on China as the sole creditor, enhancing financial resilience. Kenya has also engaged in careful negotiation of loan agreements with China, ensuring favorable terms, manageable repayment schedules, and transparent conditions. By conducting thorough assessments of the long-term economic viability and associated risks of projects, Kenya aims to mitigate the potential negative impacts of excessive debt. 2. Zambia Zambia has seen a significant increase in Chinese investment, particularly in the mining sector. The country's reliance on Chinese loans and investments has led to a high debt burden. In 2019, Zambia struggled to repay its debts, resulting in the seizure of some national assets by Chinese creditors. Zambia has taken proactive steps to address the debt trap concerns arising from its relationship with China. The Zambian government has engaged in debt restructuring negotiations with China to alleviate the burden of repayment. By renegotiating loan terms, extending repayment periods, or seeking debt forgiveness, Zambia aims to ease the financial strain and create breathing space for its economy. Zambia has also pursued efforts to diversify its funding sources and reduce its reliance on Chinese loans. The government has actively sought partnerships with other international financial institutions and explored opportunities for private sector investments. This strategy aims to broaden access to capital and expertise while reducing vulnerability to a single creditor. 3. Ethiopia Ethiopia has been a major recipient of Chinese investments in Africa. Chinese companies have been involved in numerous infrastructure projects, including railways, roads, and industrial parks. While these investments have contributed to the country's economic growth, concerns exist regarding the repayment of loans and the potential long-term consequences on Ethiopia's economy. 
Ethiopia has taken several measures to address the concerns surrounding the debt trap posed by China. The government has actively pursued diversification of funding sources by seeking financial partnerships with other international institutions and exploring opportunities for private sector investments. This approach aims to reduce over-reliance on Chinese loans, providing Ethiopia with a broader range of financial options and reducing vulnerability to a single creditor. Ethiopia has emphasized the importance of transparency and accountability in its financial management practices. The government has implemented reforms to enhance domestic governance and oversight mechanisms, ensuring that funds are utilized effectively and in line with national development priorities. By promoting transparency, Ethiopia aims to mitigate the risk of corruption and mismanagement associated with debt trap scenarios. It's important to note that these examples represent a fraction of the African countries impacted by China's debt trap diplomacy. The nature and extent of China's involvement vary across nations, but the concerns surrounding debt burdens, potential loss of sovereignty, and the long-term consequences of Chinese investments are common themes across the continent. A series of challenges have been emerging in the vast continent of Africa in the wake of China's investments and loans. Africa has faced a lot of debt burden over the years. They have found themselves trapped in a relentless cycle of borrowing and struggling to repay the loans extended by China. This burden not only limits their financial flexibility, but also diverts valuable resources from other sectors, impeding long-term development. When African nations fail to meet their debt obligations, they face the risk of relinquishing control over critical assets. This allows China to exert influence and control over strategic infrastructure or valuable resources, compromising the sovereignty and decision-making autonomy of these nations. Over-reliance on Chinese investments and loans has created economic vulnerabilities for African countries. They become susceptible to the fluctuations in China's economy and policy shifts, which hinders their ability to pursue diverse economic growth and development strategies. China's investments in Africa are often centered around extractive industries, which bring forth environmental and social consequences. Insufficient environmental regulations and labor standards result in the exploitation of resources, leading to environmental degradation and social inequalities. The impacts of these ventures cast a shadow over the land and its inhabitants. These challenges present a complex and intertwined narrative for African countries. They face the arduous task of addressing the debt burden, safeguarding their sovereignty, diversifying their economic dependencies, and mitigating the adverse environmental and social impacts. Through strategic decision-making, collaboration, and resilience, the African nations can embark on a path towards a brighter future one where the debt burden would be alleviated, sovereignty preserved, economic independence fostered, and sustainable development championed. The European Union and the USA have been actively engaged in Africa as a result of this through various initiatives, including development assistance, trade partnerships, and political dialogues. The EU aims to promote sustainable development, human rights, and good governance. Regarding China's involvement, the EU has expressed the need for a more balanced and fair relationship. They emphasize the importance of transparency, environmental protection, and social responsibility in China's investments in Africa. They have also been working to strengthen partnerships with African countries, providing alternatives to China's offers. By promoting responsible investment and supporting local businesses, the EU seeks to offer African nations a different path to development. The U.S. has a long history of engagement with Africa, focusing on security cooperation, democracy promotion, and economic development. The U.S. has raised questions about debt sustainability, transparency, and the potential strategic implications of China's expanding influence in Africa. They've emphasized the importance of fair and transparent business practices, promoting accountability and good governance, just like the EU has been doing. To counterbalance China, the USA has sought to increase its own economic and diplomatic initiatives in Africa. This includes expanding trade partnerships, encouraging private sector investments, and supporting African-led development programs. It's important to note that both the EU and the USA approach China's involvement in Africa with their own strategies and priorities. While they share concerns about the debt trap diplomacy, 
Their responses may vary based on their individual interests and relationships with African nations. Let's have a break. We hope you are learning a lot from this video. Encourage us to keep making videos like this for you by liking this video and subscribing to the new tourist channel. Do not forget to turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload interesting videos like this. Let's continue. There are various strategies African countries can use to mitigate risks on these traps and maximize benefits. Enhancing domestic oversight mechanisms, conducting comprehensive feasibility studies, and implementing sound project management practices can help minimize corruption and mismanagement. African countries should seek diversified funding sources, including partnerships with other international financial institutions, regional organizations, and private sector investments. This approach reduces dependence on a single creditor and broadens access to expertise and capital. Engaging in careful negotiation of loan agreements, ensuring fair interest rates, manageable repayment schedules, and transparent terms could go a long way to help them. This includes thorough assessments of the long-term economic viability and potential risks associated with the projects being financed. Encouraging the development of domestic industries through capacity building, technology transfer, and supporting local businesses can enhance economic resilience and reduce reliance on imports. Promoting local content requirements in contracts and investments can also boost job creation and foster sustainable development. Collaborating on infrastructure projects, trade agreements, and policy frameworks can enhance bargaining positions and mitigate individual vulnerabilities. When this is done, Africa will be able to live beyond this trap. One important fact to know from all this is that the future for the countries that have felt the impact of China's diplomacy and debt trap strategy is complex and uncertain. Many of these countries may continue to face difficulties in repaying their debts to China. This could result in increased pressure on their economies, potentially leading to austerity measures, reduced public spending, and a slowdown in development projects. In the future, affected countries may need to negotiate terms with China, explore debt restructuring options, or seek alternative financing sources to regain control and protect their sovereignty. The countries heavily reliant on Chinese investments may recognize the need for economic diversification and could explore strategies to attract investments from a broader range of partners. The experiences with China's debt trap diplomacy may serve as important lessons for African countries in managing future engagements with external partners. They may become more cautious, conduct thorough assessments of loan agreements, and prioritize projects that align with their long-term development goals and national interests. African nations may as well seek to strike a balance between engaging with China and diversifying their relationships with other global powers. China's debt trap diplomacy in Africa has had significant consequences that African countries must grapple with. The burden of debt, potential loss of sovereignty, economic dependence, and environmental and social impacts are all challenges that need to be addressed. China's debt trap diplomacy in Africa is a complex issue with no easy answers. There is evidence to suggest that China has used debt to gain political leverage over African countries, but there is also evidence to suggest that China's loans have helped to improve infrastructure and economic development in Africa. The impact of China's debt trap diplomacy in Africa will depend on a number of factors, including the terms of the loans, the use of the funds, and the economic conditions of the countries involved. It is important to continue to monitor the situation and to assess the impact of China's engagement in Africa in order to ensure that it is beneficial to all parties involved. We have come to the end of this video. What is your take on China's debt trap diplomacy on Africa? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, like this video and subscribe to the new tourist channel, and do not forget to turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload interesting videos about Africa like this. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.